expert feeding on salmon, berries, and other foods. Brown bears at Brooks River in Katmai National Park have reached peak fat. Bears get fat to survive, and fat is the fuel that powers their ability to endure the months-long famine that is winter hibernation. What challenges did the bears of Fat Bear Week experience in their efforts to get as big as possible? That's a question we'll investigate as we reveal the contenders and the bracket for the 2021 Fat Bear Week competition, an event brought to you by Katmai National Park, the Katmai Conservancy, and Explore.org. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Fitz, and I'm the resident naturalist with Explore.org. Joining me today are my co-hosts from Katmai National Park, Rangers Naomi Boak, Leon Law, and Cheryl Spencer. Rangers, thanks so much uh, for being here and joining me today. Hey, Mike. Mike. Hey. So I, I, off, the, off the bat, uh, I want to know on a scale of one to five, with five being uh, most excited, uh, how, how excited are you for this year's Fat Bear Week? Leon, what do you think? <laughs> I would agree with Naomi there holding up the 10. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, right. it doesn't get better than Fat Bear Week. <laughs> so. Naomi, you already gave your answer there, but yeah, you're doubly excited. It looks like you're a 10 on, I, on the, that I, scale. I'm I'm so excited. You know, you spend all year um, with these bears and like the bear cam viewers have, and this is it. This is the happiest week of the year. And Cheryl, what about what about you? Uh, I agree with everyone else. A kajillion um, level of excitement. It is the most wonderful time of the year here at Katmai. Um, we love fat bears. I, I am very eager for Fat Bear Week as well, and we have many exciting live events coming up this week, uh, including another live chat on Wednesday. And you can find a list of our other live events on uh, blog.explore.org. If you're a teacher, we also invite you to take Fat Bear Week into the classroom. You can find out more about information about that event and how your class can participate by looking for the Fat Bear Week in the Classroom link in the featured comment below the live camera feed. And I think, of course, as you mentioned, uh, that we're all super excited about uh, Fat Bear Week and revealing the contenders for Fat Bear Week this year. But before we introduce the Bears of Fat Bear Week, uh, let's learn a little bit more about the event. Cheryl, tell us about Fat Bear Week. What is it? Well, Fat Bear Week is a bracket style competition that the park first initiated back in October of 2014. Um, back then, it was just known as Fat Bear Tuesday. Um, it has since expanded into a glorious week long um, event of fat bears. Uh, basically, um, it's a March miles, sorry, a March madness style bracket competition, uh, where we match up bears, um, against one another and people get to vote on which of Katmai's bears has gotten the fattest over the course of the summer. Um, fat bears equal successful bears. Um, bears spend all summer packing on pounds out here, um, so that they have as much weight as they possibly can to survive hibernation. Um, and a fat bear equals a successful bear. And that's why we're here to celebrate glorious fat bears. Um, there's a lot of bears out here in Katmai. Um, deciding which bear should be on the bracket and which shouldn't is a super challenging um, and heavily debated subject amongst the rangers um, and all of our other friends who collaborate with us on this event. Uh, Naomi, do you want to talk to us about um, what the process is of deciding like which bears go onto the bracket and which don't? Sure, we, we just throw darts, uh, no. Um, <laughs> right, as you, as you said, there are a lot of fat bears and successful bears um, along the Brooks River. And um, so it's not just choosing the fattest bear, there are a few other qualifications. Um, we like to, in Fat Bear Week, show how much bears have gained and how successful they are. So we like to show pictures from the beginning of the season, along with pictures from uh, late September. And um, so we have skinny pictures and fat pictures. So uh, one of the qualifications for being in Fat Bear Week, besides being ginormous, is um, being around for those pictures. Um, if they are bears that normally only come in the fall, they, they can't really be in Fat Bear Week because we don't get to see what they were like when they were skinny. Um, and those some bears who come in the, in the spring and don't return in the fall. And so they don't get to be in, in the bracket. And the other thing is that we have to get photos of them. And that's 
almost as hard as choosing the bears for the bracket because as anyone who watches the cams know these bears are in the water the um starting <laughs> in late august until we leave and getting a photo of a bear out of the water so we can show that big belly is is a challenge so um so it's a great way to celebrate these fat bears and i think you're going to um enjoy these contestants and one last uh, thing is that we want to tell their stories. We're telling about we're telling you about the success of this ecosystem and uh, and the success of these bears getting fat. But bears are individuals and they have amazing histories and amazing stories. And uh, as they compete, you'll learn more about these bears. So, um, Leon, how does the world participate in Fat Bear Week? Well, I will start off by saying that there is absolutely no wrong way to celebrate Fat Bear Week. But if you do just one thing, we encourage you to vote. And just like last year, voting takes place on www.fatbearweek.org, which is the website hosted by explore.org in partnership with Katmai National Park and Katmai Conservancy. And this is really going to be your hub for all things Fat Bear Week. And each day, as Cheryl might have mentioned, bears are pitted up against each other in a face-to-face -face matchup. And using your votes, you decide who advances to the next round and ultimately decide the champion. And so keep in mind that voting has certain hours and it is from 8 a.m. Alaska time to 5 p.m. Alaska time. And so people on the East Coast, remember that is noon to 9 p.m. We definitely want your vote to be heard. And when you do vote for these bears, you'll notice that we do ask you to put in your email. This is not to collect any information, any data collection. It is purely so that we make sure that you're only casting one vote. We don't want any stuffed ballots for Fat Bear Week. <laughs> but Mike, speaking about voting, um, how should people decide who to vote for? What's the criteria? Well, it's always a tough question to answer because it's a in, in a sense a personal one uh, fat bear week is a subject a subjective competition your vote can be based on any number of factors you can consider a bear's annual overall growth like that experienced by cubs and younger bears because the younger you are the the larger you grow proportionally each year like a cub for example grows proportionally more than even the largest adult bears but perhaps you want to weigh your vote towards bears with extenuating circumstances such as a mother's cost of raising cubs or the challenges that older bears face as they age um, and we do have bears in the bracket this year that also meet those criteria or you can base your vote on simply who you think is the overall fattest bear there's no single correct set of criteria to base your vote on. And I think that's one of the things that makes Fat Bear Week so much fun. So be sure to vote and campaign for the bear who you think is the most successful and deserving of the crown this year. Only, only, 12, only 12 bears made the cut this year and our first match begins on September 29th. So let's get to the uh, our first matchup in the bracket here. Uh, and this match is between um, uh, mother bears, two mother bears who are both successful and experienced, yet they have quite different dispositions and parenting strategies. Our first bear is 435 Holly. Naomi, what does she bring to the competition? Well, she brings um, championship history. Uh, bear 435 Holly was the uh, 2019 Fat Bear Week champion, the queen of corpulence. And um, she is an amazing mom. And uh, this this uh, first head-to-head uh, -head competition is a salute to uh, the, the Sal moms of the Brooks River. Holly is um, currently uh, managing and feeding and protecting a yearling cub. And that takes a lot of energy. And even doing that, look at that bear. Look how much weight. <laughs> I mean, if you were ch running around chasing a year old child, my God, you would be, you'd be as skinny <laughs> as she was at the beginning of the year. So Holly um, has a great history. She's a great mom. She um, also tailors her activity to the needs of her cubs. Um, last year, her cub, when it was a springer, had a lot of porcupine quills 
in its paw and couldn't move very much and couldn't go very far. So Holly didn't drag it around to different parts of the park. It, she pretty much stayed in one place. This year that cub is fine, so they've been moving around a lot and she is still fat. So um, <laughs> I definitely think um, a consideration should be given to the queen of corpulence. Um, however, she is competing against another very famous bear who has been on camera a lot this year. And Cheryl, you want to talk about her competition? I would love to. Um, 435 is going to have tough competition with her uh, competitor in this first matchup. Um, as you said, one of Brooks River's other most famous mothers, uh, Bear 128. Um, she's also known as Grazer. Um, now, 128 hasn't won a Fat Bear Championship yet, but look at her. Um, she's super fat this year. <laughs> Um, she's estimated to be around, um, I think it was like 19 years old, um, and she's had two known litters, um, including the two yearling cubs that she currently has uh, this year. Um, and she had a litter of three a few years back. Um, 128 um, is best known, I guess, for her protective and defensive um, attitude towards other bears. Um, she is frequently seen uh, challenging bears much larger than she is any time. They dare even think about getting close to her or her cubs, uh, which can be really intense to watch um, on the cams, um, but she's fearless. Um, she's a super tough mama bear, um, and she got super fat this year too, and her yearlings are insanely fat as well. Um, she has taught them a lot of really valuable skills about how to fish at Brooks Falls and in other parts of the river. Um, she historically has been really skilled at fishing up at the lip of Brooks Falls, um, this year with her yearling cubs, though, she's been displaying a lot of dominant behavior, um, even towards, you know, some of the larger, more dominant male bears out at the Bro at a Brooks Falls. Um, so in addition to fishing up at the lip, which she has been doing a lot this year, she's also um, been fishing in other parts of the river, too, uh, where you don't typically see uh, female bears fishing, especially ones with uh, yearlings or spring cubs. Um, she's been witness fishing in the jacuzzi. Um, also back in the north side of the river um, in the area called the conveyor belt near the office. Um, these spots are like, typically only held by dominant male bears, but 128 Grazer has just been like kicking butt this year and just being really successful as a bear. Um, and she's super fat. And like I said, she's been um, imparting this wisdom on her yearlings too, who are also just ginormous this year. Um, she's going to be, I think, a really tough competitor in this competition. Um, and having successful moms like 435 or 128 um, as a cub or a yearling cub is really critical to like learning life skills. Um, successful moms is sort of impart that wisdom to uh, their offspring, and that could lead to you know like a more successful um, life as an adult there too. Uh, now these two moms are going to have a really interesting uh, competitor, whichever one of them does win. Uh, they will be facing the first ever winner of Fat Bear Junior uh, this year. Leon, do you want to tell us about the cub that um, the winner of the Mama match is going to have to go against? Absolutely. So as Cheryl mentioned, we had our very first Fat Bear Junior. And with Floof and Fat, 132's <laughs> Spring Cub did manage to claim that title. And since this cub has already won several matchups, we did decide to give them a bye. So they will be facing whoever wins that last matchup between 435 and 128. Now, 132's cub is in the first year of its life, and it is one of two surviving in a litter of three that 132 showed up with early in July this year. Now, they have really benefited from having an experienced mom. So 132 has had two previous litters, and she has also fished Brooks River every summer of her life or since 2009. And so that can really benefit that, her cubs. And you might think that it's really difficult for perhaps a spring cub to go against some of our behemoth adults. And indeed it is. However, when you talk about percentage of weight gain, right, cubs have it hands down. 
So for instance, this spring cub was born in the den and weighed a mere pound. So think roughly the size of a soup can. Um, however, when it goes into the den again this winter, it could weigh 70 to 80 pounds plus. So it is a huge percentage of weight gain that none of any adult bear can even come close to. So definitely don't count the cubs out. Um, it is gonna be tough, but don't count them, count them out yet. Um, but Mike, can you tell us about our next matchup? Yeah, we got three out of nine bears announced, but we still have many more to go. And our second first round matchup also takes place on September 29. And this is actually between two large adult males, one of which is in the prime of his life while the other is transitioning into his older adult years. So let me introduce you to the older bear in this match, number 634, Popeye. And in my opinion, Popeye is an archetypal brown bear. He displays all the classic features that are associated with brown and grizzly bears. A round face, he has a prominent shoulder hump, and grizzled brown fur. As a young bear, his forearms were so well furred that they appeared unusually large, and that feature actually inspired his nickname. Unlike a lot of adult males his age, Popeye doesn't seem uh, to bear large or even noticeable scars uh, and perhaps that's the result of his behavior. Although I remember instances when he's tried to steal fish from other bears, I wouldn't con uh, and I wouldn't consider Popeye to be a particularly tolerant of other bears. But at Brooks Falls, you know, he really seems to tend to avoid conflict more often than engage in it. And physically, I mean, he looks great. Maybe that's uh, part of the result of that strategy. He was identified as an older subadult bear in 2002 which means he was about uh, four years old then. And then uh, so, and today he's in his early 20s. He's one of several older adult male bears at the river who must adapt to the competition posed by younger bears. They need to do that if they're going to remain healthy and successful into their mid and to late 20s and maybe even beyond with a few fortunate bears. Popeye's still a big guy, uh, still holds a lot of sway at the river. He's still fairly dominant because he is so large. Yet as he ages, he faces tougher and tougher competition from younger bears who are entering the prime of their lives. Cheryl, which younger adult male will voters have to weigh against Popeye in this match? Well, uh, 634 is going to be going against a bear in his mid-teens now. So as he's sort of like entering the prime of bear adulthood, um, that's going to be Bear 151 Walker. Um, now, 151 Walker is one of those bears that if you go out to Brooks Falls or if you watch on the cams, you feel like, wow, this bear never leaves the river. Um, he's pretty much always there. Uh, <laughs> and he kind of is. Um, I've seen him sleeping out there in the river. The guy is putting his time in and working super hard at getting really, really fat. Um, look at that uh, after photo. I mean, this bear, um, as I said, he puts his time in at the river. Um, he is sort of like in his mid-teens, so he's entering what most people would consider um, kind of mature adulthood for a bear. Um, and as he's been doing that, um, we've been observing uh, his behavior changing as well. Uh, when he was a younger bear, uh, 151 Walker was a really, really playful bear and played with lots of other bears, um, both his size and older than him. Uh, but lately in the past couple of years, we've been sort of noticing that as he's turning into adulthood and sort of coming into his birth, I guess, um, he's becoming a little less playful um, and asserting his dominance around the falls a little bit more. Um, and while he used to be a lot more playful when he was younger, um, he's still a little playful now. I, I saw him a couple times uh, this year out in the river playing uh, with younger adult male bears um, sometimes. But you can tell these other bears are sort of like, wow, this guy is huge um, and he's approaching me. What do I do? Uh, 151 is a bear that continues to get bigger every single year he comes back to the river. Um, I think last year, we estimated him to be around a thousand pounds in the fall. Um, and he is much bigger than that this year. So he keeps getting bigger every year that he comes back to the river, um, which is pretty awesome. And it's hard to argue with a bear that's got a bottom like that. I mean, this is a chunky bear. Um, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah, and he puts his time in at the river. Um, he has a hard work ethic as a bear. Um, he is an adaptive and he is a skilled fisher. Um, he's gonna be, I think, a really, tough contender in this competition, um, even though he is sort of like younger than some of the other larger adult mares, sorry, males that are gonna be in this competition. Um, now both 634 and 151 um, are gonna 
be going against one another. But the winner of this matchup is going to be challenging um, one of the largest bears um, that hangs out at the Brooks River. Uh, Leon, tell us about our next guy coming up. Yeah, absolutely. So the they will go against 32 Chunk, who is getting a bye this year. Um, 32 Chunk, he was last year's runner up, second only to 747. He is a large adult male. And last year he was estimated to weigh around 1,200 pounds or so. And this year he is looking pretty good. I have to say that I did witness him come down the steep bank um, to make his way to the river, and it was quite a sight to behold because he was definitely having some difficulty um, given his weight. And so I think that is a testament to how well he is doing. Now, this year, 32, he came back this season with a large um, wound across his muzzle, but since it has healed quite nicely. However, it'll probably continue to be a good identifying feature for anybody who is looking to start telling our bears apart. Um, 32, he also ranks among one of the most dominant bears on Brooks River, so he is able to secure his preferred fishing spots with relative ease. However, despite that, he still remains quite an enigmatic individual. While he can and does throw his weight around when it is necessary, we also see behavior from him like patiently scavenging um, or playing with other bears. And that's not something that we necessarily see from other large adult and dominant males. So we'll see this year if his combination of traits and girth are able to take him all the way to the champion. Uh, but Mike, what do we got for the next matchup? The next, next matchup is quite intriguing uh, as well. In, in fact, uh, Rangers, I think, have done a really good job this, this year of making uh, the choices for the public pretty tough, to tell you the truth. Uh, so September 30th brings two more first-round matches, and the first of which that we'll talk about includes a couple of the younger bears in Fat Bear Week. Naomi, what can you tell us about Bear 812 and his ability to get fat? Well, I think if you look at Bear 812's um, photos, I think that says it all. Um, Bear, <laughs> look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Just says it all. Um, Bear 812 is only six years old. He's huge for being only six. He is, um, his mother was Bear 402, who um, is another great. Uh, Sal, who has uh, produced a lot, some of the largest bears on the Brook River. And um, so 812 learned how to fish on the lip from his mother, and he does that really well. You can see, uh, starts out just concentrating on those fish and putting on those pounds. Um, and you can see him also, um, uh, he likes to sometimes uh, take his cat behind him and eat at a table or a rock. So a polite as well. Um, but 812 tells an interesting story about the Brooks River because he is a bear who was born into a time of plenty on the Brooks River when he had very large salmon runs. And had he not been born at this time, he may not have grown as big as he has. So he is a great example of our healthy ecosystem and what it means to be born and grow up in a time when uh, there are just so many salmon to fill out a bear. So um, 812 is, um, is a great bear and a bear to watch in coming years and certainly a bear to watch in this competition. And um, he has um, another uh, competitor who is young and um, gained a lot of weight this year, and is a little younger. Cheryl, you want to tell us about uh, 812's competitor in this bracket? I'd love to. Um, so 812 is going to be going against uh, the second youngest bear in this competition, uh, which is going to be Bear 131. Um, 131 is part of a group of three sisters that were emancipated by Bear 482 last summer, um, which makes it her second year on her own um, out as a young subadult bear. Um, now she is, like I said, the second youngest bear in this competition. Um, she has really distinctive colored fur, as you can see. Um, in early July, uh, her fur is almost 
so blonde that it looks white, um, which helps her stand out a little bit in the crowd. Um, as a younger subadult bear, uh, we didn't really see her fishing up at the falls that much this year. Uh, that typically is a place where you don't see a lot of uh, super young bears. Um, so she's mainly like scavenging for scraps and fishing in the lower river. Um, and she's been really successful at that. Uh, we saw her a lot in June and July. And then like many of the bears, the Brooks River um, do, she left in August to go fish other places. Um, and when she came back in September, as you can see, she looked way bigger um, than the, we had last seen her in July. So she has obviously had a successful summer um, somewhere fishing and gaining a lot of weight. Um, as a younger bear, especially in this competition, but also just in life in general, um, life is challenging for young subadult bears, especially at the Brooks River, which is populated by so many really big bears. Um, it can be challenging for young bears like uh, 131 to compete for fishing spots um, and put on the necessary weight that they need to in order to have his success, sorry, a successful summer um, and then to survive through the winter hibernation as well. Um, and it can be sort of like comparing her to some of these other huge boars that are in this competition. Um, she might not seem as opposing in size to them, but in weight gain, she's done extremely well. Um, and I don't think she should be discounted necessarily because she isn't one of the huge boars such as 32 um, or bear like 634. Um, she's gained a lot of weight. She's had a successful summer and she's learned a lot as a young adult bear. Um, and that's really important. Um, young adulthood and sub-adulthood for bears is a really critical time for them to learn the necessary skills that they need to, to survive. Uh, the winner of the 812-131 matchup actually has one of the most unique sort of young adulthood stories out of any Brooks bear. Um, and it's quite an interesting tale. Uh, Mike, do you wanna tell us about the opponent uh, for, sorry, the opponent for the winner of this matchup? Absolutely. The bear that uh, either uh, 131 or 812 will face is number 503. And I find him to be a fascinating bear to watch. He's led a particularly unique life so far. Uh, in early July 2014, his mother, 402, separated from him as a yearling, which is one to two years earlier than normal for bears in Katmai. But he was soon adopted by Holly in her single spring cub uh, that year. So he, he remained with that family until the summer of 2016. And like um, the bears that we were just talking about, 812 and 131, 503 really seems to be coming of age at a great time to be a bear in Central Katmai National Park. Salmon runs from Bristol Bay are plentiful, and his tolerance for other bears has allowed him to deftly nav navigate the competition in risks posed by other bears at Brooks Falls. For the most part, he's remained one of the most playful and tolerant young bears I have ever had the experience of watching. I know he's brought joy to many people who have been able to watch his behavior on the webcams or in person at Brooks River. And he's probably also done a little bit of the same for some of his sparring partners, because it really does seem like a lot of bears have fun when they encounter 503 and they start to play fight. And despite all of that energy that maybe he expends in those play fights, I mean, he's still gaining a lot of weight and gaining uh, body size as well. 503 is currently a large bear for his age. Remember, he was born in 2013, so he's not that old. And we should not forget that as a seven-year-old this year, he still has a ton of growing to do. He may not reach his peak body size for several more years. When that happens, the tolerant bear, the playful bear that we now recognize as 503 may have very different priorities as a mature adult. And I think 503's story illustrates that the lives of bears don't have to follow a set formula. And much of this bear's story remains to be written. So I'm very much looking forward to watching 503 in future years and seeing how he does in this year's uh, Fat Bear Week. And that's three quarters of our bracket so far, yet there are three bears remaining. And I think each one of these bears are all top contenders. This might be really kind of maybe the, one of the toughest corners of the bracket overall. Our last first round match includes two of the most senior bears at Brooks River. Let's begin with one of the river's most reproductively successful female bears ever documented. Naomi, what does uh, this bear's story tell us about female bears in their mid to late 20s or older? Well, this is bear 402, uh, the mother of 503. And 402 is, um, she's 24, 25, which makes her one of our oldest bears but um, 
she has also had seven litters that we know of. And that's probably almost maxes out the number of litters that uh, a sow can have because of um, the time it takes to raise the cubs and then um, the next year before a year or two before she has another litter. Um, she is, um, she's produced some of the biggest and healthiest bears on the river. She, and look at her, I mean, she, she's a big butterball. Um, so, and she's, she's uh, single this year. So it gives her greater opportunity to get large because when, when she has litters, I mean, she's had two litters of four cubs, which is just un, unheard of. And when she's doing that, she is a multitasking mama. Um, any of you mothers out there can relate to that, what it takes to raise kids and, um, and do 20 things at once. Well, when you watch 402, when she's got cubs, it's an amazing thing to see. She brings, tends to bring her cubs to the falls even when they're in their first season and not all mother bears do that. So that means she's got to protect them while they're there. She's got to feed herself. She's got to feed them. She's got to produce 20% milk to nurse them. And, um, and then hopefully they survive to the next year. And when they're yearlings, she bring, brings them up onto the lip so that they learn firsthand how to fish up there. And as you, could, you saw from Bear 812 and, and Bear 503, um, they are great lip fishers. So she has, um, she has given a lot to her offspring, but this year is her selfish year. She gets to get fat and be a single gal. And um, <laughs> hoping, even though she is this old, that she may come back with cubs next year because if a sow is fat enough, um, the um, fertilized egg will implant sometime in the winter and she will have more cubs. And she, it's possible for her to do that. So um, I'm rooting for 402. She Look at her photographs. It's, I think it says it all, but she's got some tough senior competition in our next bear. Leon, you want to tell us about um, 402's competitor? Yes, and that tough competitor is none other than 480 Otis himself. Um, he is a fan favorite and no stranger to Fat Bear Week, having already won three crowns. Now, he was first identified in 2001 as an older subadult or young adult. So that puts him in his mid-20s, probably around 26 or so. And this year, he did keep fans anxiously waiting mm -hmm. um, before he made his return to Brooks River. It is the latest that 480 has ever come back, and he has used this river since he has been identified every year of his life. And he didn't come back until July 26th. But as you can see from the photos, uh, that did not hinder him at all in packing on the pounds. And so even though he is an older bear, he still finds success in spite of some of those challenges. For instance, he has missing teeth, um, broken and worn down teeth, and he's no longer really able to displace other bears from his preferred fishing spots, like the jacuzzi or the far wall. But that hasn't stopped him from finding success, and his technique is to patiently wait. Um, and he does this marvelously well. As you can see, um, he did quite well for himself this year, and he is going to be a tough competitor. Um, but the winner of this matchup, either 402 or 480, will go against none other than one of Mike's favorite bears, if you want to let us in on who that is. Yes, our final. A fat bear week contender is last year's champ a bear who needs no compliments only salmon few bears will ever grow <laughs> as large as the bear who shares an identification number with a jet airplane this is bear 747 he was first identified in 2004 as a subadult but nothing about his behavior or physical appearance at that time indicated he would grow as large as he is right now uh estimated he's probably estimated to weigh about 1400 pounds uh, this year because last year that was a reasonable estimate 
uh, for him just based on some LIDAR scans of the bears that happened at the river. And there's really no reason to suspect that he's any smaller this year. 747 is the largest bear that I have ever seen. And he's likely one of the largest brown bears alive on earth right now. And although, you know, many dominant bears can maintain their rank in the hierarchy through aggression, uh, 747 typically keeps his size sheer size alone. Most bears recognize that they can't compete with him physically and they yield space anytime that they see him approaching. This past summer, he was Brooks River's most dominant adult male. And I think it's really paid off in body size. He was large when he returned in early summer. He just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger as he uh, competed for access to the best fishing spots. And of course, you can't grow as big as 747 has without being a good angler. 747 is particularly skilled when he fishes the plunge pool below Brooks Falls. He's also uh, so large and so dominant that he has nearly free reign and free access to the most productive fishing spots, basically anywhere downstream of Brooks Falls. So he can afford to sit and wait for food to come to him. And not all bears have that uh, advantage. 747, in my opinion, is an absolute unit in the truest sense of the meme. And we should feel privileged to witness such a large bear. It may be a long time before we see a bear as big as him again. And that is our 2021 Fat Bear Week bracket. Voting begins at noon Eastern on Wednesday, September 29. Before we conclude our broadcast, however, I think there's an opportunity here to maybe tease a little bit more information out of our Rangers here, my co-host uh, today, because I'm interested to know about uh, their predictions for Fat Bear Week. And these aren't endorsements uh, from the Rangers. They try to stay uh, more neutral maybe than I am, but I'm, I'm interested to know in uh, who they think is gonna reach those um, th that final round. Um, so Cheryl, let's start with you. Um, who's uh, making the finals this year? And if you want to, maybe uh, you wanna let us know who you think might win. Well, um, as you said, 747 is an absolute unit. Um, looking at those photos and seeing him in person, it's hard to imagine that bears get fatter than that. Um, he's gonna be a super tough, challenging dude to beat this year. Um, but I think 128 is going to do really well in this competition. Um, she is enormously fat and she's had a really successful year and um, is just overall a super awesome bear um, and really good at what she does. So I think she's going to be um, a sneaky one uh, up in the competition. She has yet to win a title either, um, but she's always really fat. I think this year she's the fattest she's ever been. Um, I think it might be 128 Grazer's year this year to steal that title from 747. Um, that's where I stand. <laughs> Those are good choices. Those are really good choices. Uh, and and um, and Leon, um, I know that you have some opinions on this as well. Who do you think is going to the finals? <laughs> oh man, I think there's so many good options. I do have to agree that I think seven four seven has it this year to potentially have a back to back win. Um, he is just a really tough competitor to beat. But at the same time, I look at pictures of 151 Walker and I am shocked that he has not yet won a <laughs> Fat Bear uh, title. And so I, I personally think it could be them too. I don't know, but um, both are excellent, excellent contenders this year. And Naomi, what's your uh, opinion on, on this? Who's in the finals this year? I never have opinions. Um, so, uh, <laughs> wanted to uh, thank uh, 747's publicist for giving us an opportunity to speak. Um, but um, <laughs> there, there is no question that 747 is our fattest bear. I mean, he is, as Mike says, a unit in every sense of the word. However, um, I'm thinking there could be an upset this year. I think that 480 Otis could win he came in really skinny. He, he he hadn't eaten since last season, and he he got there July 26th, and other bears were already eating. And he um, what an effort! He barely has any teeth. He's he's 26 years old. We didn't think he was even going to come back. So um, although I um, think that 747 has a very good chance of winning, I think it could be a 480 upset. 
Well, I can't argue with you, honestly. If any if any bear's going to blow up my bracket this year, I think it's going to be Otis. <laughs> so, so we'll see we'll see what happens. My picks, uh, I you know I think seven four seven has what it takes to repeat. Depends on what the public says, and I think on the other side of the bracket, uh, that's going to be pretty hard to predict. I think it might be seven four seven either over a one five one Walker or one twenty eight Grazer, and that's going to be an extremely tough choice. I think for that on that side of the bracket, whoever comes out of there is going to be some real tough competition. But yeah, it's. I have to, you know, tip my my virtual hat to uh, the Rangers for setting up the bracket this way, uh, because it, it doesn't make it easy on the public. We really have to think hard about the stories of these bears, uh, and and the challenges that they face during their lives, what fat means uh, to their overall survival, and think about how that might influence our vote, because it certainly is influencing mine uh, this year. Just to remind everybody that Fat Bear Week voting begins on September 29, right on fatbearweek.org. We encourage everyone to campaign for your favorite Fat Bear Week candidate. You can download your own bracket from fatbearweek.org. You can fill it out, share it on social media, share it, print it out for your office or your school, uh, wherever you want it, put it in your home, tag it with the hashtag Fat Bear Week if you put it online and tell the world about your Bears platform. If you're a teacher, please consider participating in Fat Bear Week in the classroom. Again, you can find a link to that event in the featured comment below the live camera feed. And I would like to thank the staff at Explore.org for helping to put this event on. And of course, I'd like to thank the Rangers at Katmai National Park for helping uh, to produce this event as well. It may seem uh, like it's kind of like a simple event, but it actually takes a, a considerable amount of work. Uh, to put on. And I know these three Rangers in particular have been working extremely hard over the last several weeks uh, to make Fat Bear Week a reality. So thanks to them uh, for everything that they they do uh, this year. So yeah, Rangers, uh, my, my hat's off to you. And uh, thanks for joining me today. It's been great to speak with you. Great to be here. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Mike. So no matter how you vote in Fat Bear Week, please remember that fat is the fuel that powers a brown bear's wintertime survival. Hibernating bears don't eat, they don't drink, they don't urinate, they don't defecate. Each bear understands that they are working against the clock in order to gain the fat necessary to not only sustain their winter survival, but also give them a head start next spring when food is scarce, cubs are hungry, and the mating season begins. We'll talk more about that in our live chat on Wednesday. Same bear time, same bear channel. The Fat Bear Week is our opportunity to consider the challenges bears face in order to gain enough weight to survive winter. It gives us a chance to weigh the competition and marvel at the success, as well as the health and productivity of Katmai's ecosystems. Be sure to watch the bears every day uh, on explore.org. My name is Mike Fitz. Thanks for watching. Please be well and let the countdown to Fat Bear Week begin. <laughs>